Thank you very much for having me. My name is Manuela Veloso, and I'm going to tell you about AI for Financial Services. And it's a pleasure to be presenting this at uh, the Ray Summit. And uh, I'm currently the head of this uh, effort at JP Morgan for AI research. And I was previously a professor at Carnegie Mellon University for many years. So let me explain to you what I want to tell you about. And basically, first, let me tell you that somehow I've seen for a long time uh, as a, a AI as components and their integration. So AI with its goal of trying to achieve artificial intelligence, and intelligence has many facets, really is a discipline that is built of all these facets of intelligence. But somehow, if we look at these facets of intelligence integrated from an engineering and then from a scientific point of view, we get these agents that are autonomous, that are capable of processing data, making decisions, and really actuating. And I've been developing these autonomous robots for 30 plus years. And here is an example of one that gives you a feeling of something that processes perception, all the sensing data, uh, you know, cognition, all the thinking, the planning and really action. So uh, this is like what drives me is this uh, agent view of AI. So let me, we'll get back to this, but let me first now delve into what is JP Morgan and this JP Morgan uh, AI research. So uh, JP Morgan is a very large uh, bank. It has uh, uh, 250,000 employees. Uh, it's present in many countries. It has a, an investment bank with uh, millions of clients. It has a retail bank with millions of customers. It has private bank with thousands of, 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 of customers again. So there is the multiple functions, the multiple lines of business and the scale. All of these type of like uh, large scale uh, creates a lot of data, creates a lot of opportunities that I'll talk about in terms of like bringing AI to, uh, to this financial domain. So while this is so large at JP Morgan, there are also multiple technical levels. So there is actually close to each line of business applied AI that tries to uh, enhance or tries to optimize, tries to digitalize, tries to uh, do machine learning at the exact like local uh, particular function of a line of business. And then there is also a group at JP Morgan, several groups that do apply the AI across all the, across multiple uh, lines of business. And then there is us, the uh, AI research at JP Morgan, which is a firm wide uh, effort to try to actually uh, delve into problems uh, that may not be the immediate product, but they are longer term. So let me share with you what in fact AI research is worried about. And in fact, we uh, spent some time uh, creating like uh, our mission in terms of these AI research, what we call the aspirational goals. Goals that are not tomorrow goals, but they are with long-term goals. So, we divided them in three goals that are related to the financial domain itself. And one is to AI, how can AI help to predict and affect economic systems? Another one is how can AI, in fact, liberate data safely? So the sharing of the data, like I was telling you, these enormous amounts of data and also making these financial data available externally. So how do we go about understanding how to have AI help? And then we also work on AI to really try to eradicate financial crime, fraud, uh, money laundering, all problems related to financial crime. So these three are aspirational goals. As you can see, we use these kind of like uh, ambitious uh, verbs uh, to, to liberate, to eradicate, to predict an effect. So these are things that are long-term goals we pursue. And then we also, within the financial domain, pursue these uh, long-term goals related basically with the stakeholders of the domain. So in a financial domain, you have at JP Morgan, the employees, we have the, these clients, and then we have the regulators. So we, we think about these three stakeholders and we research on uh, AI, how do we use AI to empower 
employees at the firm, how to use AI to perfect this client experience, and how do we agentize, how do we actually look at policy compliance as uh, some kind of like a model that we then can reason about using AI. And then there we have also the seventh aspirational goal is kind of like overarching uh, in terms of like having to, and we research on establishing ethical and socially good AI systems. So this goes across all the lines of business, all the efforts with stakeholders. It's something that we study how to do this. So now that I told you about like a little bit of my past, about what I think about AI, what it has been like, uh, what drives me through the years, what is JP Morgan in terms of like uh, lines of business and technical level, and now I stated the inspirational goals. The rest of the talk, uh, I'm just going to focus on two problems, two, two of these uh, um, two projects within these particular inspiration goals, and just I'll just end. And um, let me just go ahead and just uh, do this fast. Uh, trying to uh, explain to you as much as I can. So basically there is a problem in the AI to predict and uh, affect economic systems that is of great relevance, which is, is what we call OTC, over-the-counter markets. And basically it's a highly um, multi-agent domain. It's a problem that involves two types of agents, ma market makers and investors, and they have limited connectivity, which means a market agent, uh, an investor may know or be, connected only to a few market makers and vice versa. And the market makers really just stream price at which they are willing to trade. And the investors decide with which market maker are they going to transact. And that decision is mostly also based on the pricing. So we look at this problem uh, with the goal of trying to learn market maker behavior. So we want to learn how to uh, come up with policies for these market makers. And uh, again, here is where comes back my initial presentation that we look at these as agents. So it's really a real uh, multi-agent simulation. So we are trying to do a, a realistic multi-agent simulation and apply multi-agent reinforcement learning to such uh, agent-based simulation. And uh, the way we have worked on this is that we have created investor agents and market maker agents and the investor agents are non-learning agents and they generate trades according to a given process and to a fixed distribution specific to a type. So we have multiple types and we can uh, challenge our learning market makers to different types of investor agents, but basically they are of different types. And then the market makers are, have super types in which they have observations of all the trades. I'll explain to the super types in a second. They have observed all the trades. They have actions to steam these prices and they have reward and they hatch inventory. This is something about like keeping uh, inventory and they are going to get penalty for these uh, inventory they keep weighted by some risk aversion. And this is like details that uh, our papers mention. And uh, this work in particular, this OTC market work, as I'll show in a second, is led by Sumitra Ganesh, and who, who, who actually is uh, leading these um, multi-agent, multi-reinforcement learning, multi-agent reinforcement learning uh, research. So uh, these, uh, the super types basically are capturing uh, the connectivity of these uh, super mar these market makers and their risk aversion, the edge kind of like uh, um, actions they take. Uh, in a, we parameterize and we create different types with different parameters for risk aversion and connectivity. And we then create an agent super type uh, as uh, we sample from these probability distributions over these parameter, these, uh, this model lambda, and we can have different types of uh, market maker agents. So the interesting thing is that, again, with this goal of doing this multi-agent reinforcement learning, we uh, are very happily using Ray and RLlib uh, for shared, and we, we actually use it with shared policy training. And uh, because there is a great, they, they, there is a very good support for multi-agent environments. There's flexibility to map these multiple agents to a policy. And uh, also uh, Ray enabled us to have very high quality of his existing multi-agent reinforcement learnings. And we have been using the proximal, proximal policy optimization, the PPO algorithm within Ray. So it has been a very, uh, very successful 
uh, use of, uh, of combination of the use of Ray with the goals that we had in terms of like research and domain. And uh, that's basically what it is. So as a result, we were able actually to show that these market makers uh, could learn realistic behaviors. And in particular here, uh, they were able to learn to skew the price, price skewing, which is to adjust the relative pricing on bid and asks, depending on how much inventory have they hedged. And they also uh, learn uh, to uh, manage these inventory and how much do they uh, actually uh, keep as their net position without paying hedging costs. So this was like interesting results. And again, one more result was that the skew intensity uh, increased over for higher risk aversion, which is the right thing to do. And the algorithms, the multi-agent simulation learned this behavior and lower skewing intensity for higher connectivity. So in this graph, the little dots of the same color represent some connectivity level and uh, higher connectivity, uh, it's uh, the, the bottom uh, row, the color red. So you have a lower skewing intensity for higher connectivity. So. Uh, just to finalize, uh, so we were able to uh, do this OTC market multi-agent simulation realistic in terms of defining these as an agent-based uh, multi-agent uh, uh, environment and through this connectivity grass, graph, we have this multi-agent reinforcement learn to learn this shared policy and given rewards and connectivity. And then we were also, uh, we have also research on actually uh, calibrating this system, trying to uh, adjust and learn which parameters and which uh, uh, parameters of these agent types uh, and learning the agent behavior simultaneously, such that there was some uh, match or the, the, with the real data that we had. So that research really led into uh, multiple publications, in particular these two. And as I mentioned to you, uh, Nelson Vadori and uh, Sumitra Ganesh and Meng Shu and Prashant Reddy have been uh, uh, the main um, um, pursuers of this domain, in fact, in the collaborations also with Ray. So this was the first one that I chose because exactly I'm in this Ray Summit, so I thought it was appropriate to mention these very successful and very fruitful use of Ray for these challenging, very challenging simulation domain. And again, I invite you to read these papers. They are available off our website and also an archive and at the new uh, and the next at the coming conference on ICAFE on AI and finances. But I, I think that uh, uh, you will appreciate uh, the further technical details that I didn't go through. So after this, let me go back to the story. And I want just to mention one more project very briefly uh, about the AI to liberate sa data safely. And let me just explain to you what the problem is. So, so the problem is that we have a lot of data in the firm and we have data that flows from one application to another. And basically we want to understand or we want to know which applications, which uh, Tech, which techniques, which lines of business use data and then others that use data. So this is a, actually a data labeling and data flow problem. So uh, the, the, the insight that we brought as a researcher to this problem was to represent these as networks. And the analogy is like all these networks, Facebook, we have a connection because we are friends, we talk with each other, we have a connection in LinkedIn, people in the building, there are many uh, networks that show which people are linked to what, uh, which is exactly this data flow problem between these applications. And so now the question is, given that we know some of the links that either were entered by people or we inferred from code analysis or all sorts of like uh, ways that we infer the links, are they correct or are there missing links? So the contribution here basically led by Robert Tillman and Vamsi Potluruk and actually Jahao Shao and Prashant Reddy and myself too, we are involved on deciding how do we go about deciding an algorithm to decide if a missing 
data flow was actually uh, really like missing, the data flow was missing in one of the networks that connected some kind of like applications for a particular concept, for example, data concept one, like the LinkedIn of them, or let's say that would be like how transactions, some concepts and label uh, um, influence, how can we infer that based on all the other networks, on all the other concepts? So imagine us thinking about inferring missing links in LinkedIn by using information also in Facebook, in people in the building or who plays the same sports or other networks. And that's a multi, these uh, uh, multiplex networks. And that's what we worked on. And very successfully, we were able to de develop this uh, robust entity tuner algorithm because it is tuning these entities, both the nodes and the links of these networks. And uh, basically they just, uh, the algorithm keeps adding or the removing flows based on these, uh, uh, on what we call these um, count and weight correlation that me measures our networks uh, structure, ne different networks are correlated one way or another. And that's a heuristic. Uh, the paper explains exactly what this is. And basically we then use that to infer. And we are able to, here this is just a plain example, we are able to fix a, a very large networks uh, of data. And here is like an initial network on the left, all the way to what the algorithm, all the changes the algorithm ended up proposing that were after all correct. And that would keep like these overall coherence of all the networks uh, very high. So that's uh, a very, it's an interesting project in which we introduce these use of multiple networks for inference. So just to finish, uh, this is our, uh, this leads into many other projects. If you are interested, uh, contact, contact me at uh, jpmorganchase.com. We have a website in which we say this. And just in the last few seconds, let me just tell you that we have this inaugural uh, ACM International Conference on AI and Finance, which is going to happen on October 15, 18. And it, it was supposed to be in New York City, but it's going to be virtual. And we'll share the details on how to participate, but uh, lots of like uh, results and um, approaches to this financial domain will be presented there in particular also from my lab at JP Morgan. So thank you very much again for having me. If you have any questions, send me an email. And thanks in particular to uh, Subitra Ganesh and Rob Tillman uh, for their contributions that I presented here. Thank you very much.